us know in terms so that we can be able to uh, make them panelists to be able to address this. But we are looking for Dr. Lilibet or uh, Gideon Morimi. But if I can start off with just a few questions that have uh, come uh, regarding CPD. In terms of uh, some asking that you've attended many sessions, no CPD or token. Uh, yes, a number of them resulting no CPD or token. There could be various uh, issues that could be there. Either you did not subscribe to the event or you have not checked your spam folder or uh, for the same, or uh, you might not be familiar with how you're supposed to claim it. We do not automatically uh, update the points. You're supposed to get the token number, which will be sent through uh, uh, in partnership with Dactari Online. So you will receive that email that comes with Dactari Online and we encourage you to uh, whitelist, meaning that you add it as one of your contact emails, contact addresses, so that now the email doesn't go to your spam or promotions folder. Uh, it could be then when you just say you have received zero points, we are, it's, um, we'll say that that's a question that's a bit ambiguous. We are unable to tell how to help you because we have had several events. And when uh, you just list uh, a name and we don't know where we look for your name. So we, what we want to make it a bit easier is to have a Google form that hopefully we, we shall share a link uh, online so that now it, it helps. We cannot tell. We cannot tell which event you're referring to. And uh, when we check the emails, we can uh, we are responding, re receiving like about a thousand people sending uh, a thousand emails on the email inbox it is difficult to be able to to deal with them so if you have not received the points it would be either you have not checked the folder it's an event you did not subscribe to or uh, uh, it's an, it is not yet on the portal as i scan a few of this so that regards to what were if you've attended so many sessions no cpd that would be so you check whether that is one of the concerns you have uh the one who's asking is this meeting still on this meeting on this meeting is to address CPD concerns, David Miller. So that and it will be a very short meeting because, as I said, we have already a session that should start at seven. And uh, I want to hope that when, uh, because as we are going through, I may not see when uh, the board joins us. So I would want to hope that if you see Lily Bet or um, Gideon Morimi have joined us, please. Uh, oh, thank you, Gideon has joined us. So we can be able to. Uh, so uh, I will need guide assistance from my fellow co-host. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Okay, I'm thank you. That. So if Lily joins Gideon us, and who else? Gideon Murimi and Lily Bet. Okay. Gideon Murimi and Lily Bet. So that uh, as they join. So Gideon, I'm hoping when you join, there's one of the questions we've been having in terms of self-reporting. At the start of the year, we had not yet renewed our CPD accreditation uh, status. That took a while that we managed to renew it towards the end of uh, uh, February. So now the board had said that, uh, advised that for those which we had not been able to, at that point before we had been able to update our CPD provider status, that you would be encouraged to self-report this. And what we had agreed is that we will be sending the attendance list to the board for them to verify. And all you had to do was put just some evidence, either the email, or some evidence of uh, that you had actually participated in that and the board will be able to verify that claim when they receive the attendance list. So how often do we send this attendance list or we, do we uh, summarize this attendance list. This is done at the end of the week, or in this case, it may have to be done at the end of uh, this week for all the events of March. As we've realized for some of you, you have said you've received tokens and they are not working on the portal. That could be uh, is because the tokens which have been sent after the event of 26th of February are actually the token numbers which go to the KMA, the ICPD portal, not the PPB portal. So we have discussed that with the Dr. E Online, uh, uh, what, uh, the Dr. E Online team, and uh, so now the tokens will be resent again. Okay, see, so yeah, Dr. Wanjiko, I'm not too sure. Uh, Dr. Wanjiko, is there a question you want to ask, or you want to put your? 
Are we able to unmute the Dr. Wanchiko? I've just seen. We have a raised hand for Dr. Wanchiko. Maybe that you was accidental. Okay, thank you. I've seen Lily has joined us. Lily Kipkeno, okay, so thank you. So Lily, and to hope that Lily Kipkeno is Lily Bet of the board, you can be able to unmute and just confirm. Yes, good afternoon, Dr. Okay, good afternoon, Lily, okay. So thank yes, you. Good afternoon or evening. Good evening. Good evening. So thank you, so, Lily. Those are my official names. Okay, and uh, Gideon Murimi was, I think Gideon Murimi was also here because Gideon supports you with ICT with regards to some questions about the expiry of the token. And uh, if you can tell us how long does it take before the token expires and what should we, how should we respond to issues where tokens have expired? And then we'll give you an opportunity to also tell us uh, uh, how self-reporting will be done. So I think, because uh, we've seen so many questions about how uh, self-reporting should be done, what it is you require for self-reporting? Maybe, uh, Lily, you can just tell us what is how is it that we can be sure that you've done this uh, right steps with regards to self-reporting. Thank uh, you. I don't know. Okay, thank you, Doctor. I don't know if you uh, for um, let me let me answer about the expired uh, tokens, but Murimi will come and add up. Uh, like last year, tokens were supposed to run from January to December. But the problem with the, with the, with the tokens, it, it was supposed to run from January to December, which is still even this time, it will run from January to December, but you are supposed to subscribe because uh, like this activity you are having now, it will not be there after midnight. You will not see this uh, event again on your portal. So the first step is you, subscri you subscribe first. Then now when you subscribe in that claim token, that activity will be, or that event will be in that, in your portal. And it will remain in your portal until the end of the year. Then you can take any time now to claim your, your token. But the best is that immediately you get your token, kindly claim it so that you, you don't uh, forget. So for self-reporting, I don't know if I can be given a, I think you can share to share, you to share what, the you screen? Supposed, what you are supposed to to attach. I think you you could be able to share screen. I think uh yes, Dr. Yes, can you confirm? Yes, yes okay, enabled. please share your screen. Yes. And please confirm Gideon. I have two Gideon, but I don't know who each of them. Gideon Murimi. No, I don't have Gideon Murimi. Present. Uh, please oh. raise your hand, then I can uh, pick you up. He has well, actually joined. Have... Oh, you already oh, already finally. Oh, good, yes. good, good. Oh, all right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. We can uh, see it. Yeah, this is these are the activities or the programs which are uh, present currently in our online system. So the first one we have the self-directed learning. For self-directed learning, what evidence you are supposed to attach is a, a certificate. There is a certificate of comple completion, and there is also a certificate of participation. When we talk about uh, self-directed learning, we I have seen most of you people, or most of those who are not able to attain the 20 points, they were doing a WHO online activities, and that is where you were given a certificate. So you are supposed to attach that certificate as a proof of self-directed learning also if you attend any activity like uh, maybe you attend uh, any event or activity not in the not in our ppp portal maybe it was given out by any other provider like kma or like nursing and it is relevant to pharmacy and you, you are given a token that one you can all that can be also self-directed learning and you attach your token so apart from certificate in that self-directed learning, you attach token. When we come to developing education, training, or professional material, or other related material for practitioners. Practitioners here now is the pharmacy professionals. For in case of the person who is presenting, you are supposed to attach the presentation. 
or the invitation letter. And number three, we have research and publication of papers or articles in scientific journal or current book. You attach a publication letter of acceptance or scholarly uh, book. Are we together? Are, we, are you still? Are we together? Or I'm alone? Thank you, Lily. We are together. Okay, okay. Uh, I have seen most of you, those who do research. I saw some of you doing a, a, attaching a, some research activities, and that was good of it because I could see the name of the person, even the, the page of the book, and I could uh, confirm this person was in that. Uh, or uh, participated in research. Then we have the peer review of a scientific paper or a book. You have to attach the peer review invitation document or letter or invitation letter, any of them. Number five, it is still almost the same as number four. You attach the invitation document or letter. Number six, we have uh, upon successful completion of relevant you attach proof of registration in the year. In that year, you are doing the, you are postgraduate or a diploma or your degrees. Also, for us to know that you are really doing that activity, you have to give us the progress report or the transcript of that year. Or if you have completed, you can attach the certificate. Number seven is almost the same as number six. So you attach all those proof of registration, progress, transcript. For students who are now, I know some of us, especially those who are upgrading, you give us the admission letter, progress report, and also transcript. We have a short courses like the one which is being offered at, uh, by AMREF, you give us certificate because they usually issue certificate. Number 10, we have on job training. Uh, this is like now those who are doing an internship. So for the person who is the preceptor, you can give us the training content and even the assessment document. And this can also, for the person who is doing internship or any other on training job, they can give us the assessment document, like the one we usually give our interns. We have the committee members of PSK. Uh, you will give us an appointment letter that you have been appointed to be the committee of that association. I don't see all back here, but with, uh, we, when we are reviewing our guideline and we will include all the associations. Then we have this other one, number 12. You also give us invitation uh, appointment letter, terms of reference. Members of editorial board, you give us an appointment letter. Uh, Pre-registration, pre-enrollment, we usually have as those who usually come to assist at pharmacy and poisons to do examin to, as examiners when we are doing a, a board exams. So we usually give them invitation or appointment letters. So when you are claiming your tokens, you are, you are, your points, you can attach that invitation letter. And the last one is the other board activities. This is pharmacy and poisons board activities, not any other board, like uh, evaluation of clinical trials. You, you will attach the invitation letter or appointment. So these are the activities which are currently in our online system. But as I said earlier, we are reviewing our guidelines and some of these activities we have to leave it because when we were with our committee, the CPD committee, we find we found that some of the activities are not even does not qualify to to be a CPD activities or events. So maybe we will leave some of these activities out, or we will add more activities. So this is all about the cell reporting evidence. So for the last was it last time? I had challenges because uh, someone or some of the people will attach a, sh a screenshot. Like now, uh, maybe the activity will start one hour, one hour. So it was difficult for me 
to now know to this person really attend the activity. But if you attach this evidence, we are saying it will be a proof that you attended the activity. So I don't know if there is any question up to there because this is what I had for self-reporting evidence that we are supposed to attach. Back to Dr. Ayuak. Remember I said we are going to resend the tokens again for for the events from uh, that happened after 26th of February because what was sent initially is what would go to the KMA portal. But I've seen some questions about when you attend uh, uh, events from NCK and Lily has just mentioned that those that token, I think you're supposed to convert it to PDF or save it as a PDF and attach it. Uh, I want to hope that you can uh, be able to send that because it comes as an email that uh, message. There is, uh, if Gideon can just very quickly uh, tell us what happens in case the token expires, how we be able, how can we be able to reach the board to confirm if our token has expired? Gideon. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ewak. Now, tokens expire on the first of December, uh, so generally we we don't expect the, the tokens to expire. However, we have an email on uh, the, there's a CPD's email eh, where you said. Uh, I don't know that I can be able to send uh, CPD. Uh, CPD, uh, there is a C CPD email or the practice email, which, whichever you prefer, which you can use to, to, to send us uh, the tokens that have expired or the ones that you're having a problem with. And then using those, uh, those tokens, we can now try and assist you. However, I wanted, because I also have some limited time, I want them to explain something that you have found that is uh, getting some people challenges. We are discovering that some events are slotted to, to run throughout the year. So when the token is issued, the token uh, means it will only become active at the end of the year when the, when uh, the event ends. So now if you have such a token that is taking a very long time uh, and people have to wait until the end of the, the event to happen, that token like, let's say the, it's ending at the end of the year, the token will automatically expire because on the day when your event is ending, which is at the first of, at the first of December, the token is also expiring on the same day. So what we request is that uh, for the providers just have events that don't go uh, that, uh, that that I've not seen for Kenyatta Hospital, I don't think we have such events. Eh? So those are the ones that I have noticed may have expiries. Then the other ones is some people who never claim their tokens. So they stay with the, with the with the token given until the finally the token expires. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to assist some of those cases because you find the time when the person comes to claim that the token has expired is in the following year. Like this year, we received quite a number of uh, tokens uh, that people are claiming they want to uh, claim their tokens this year for events for last year. Because the person never got the minimum points required, they handed the tokens, either they forgot to put or something happened, they never put the tokens. So those ones are the biggest uh, challenges. So it's good, uh, maybe uh, members are reminded that once you receive your token, after the event ends, it's good just to take one or two minutes and uh, claim your token. Don't keep it for too long. That issue of requesting for tokens sometimes may be difficult uh, to do it, especially if the year we change from one year to the next. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lily Gideon, for being very brief and concise. And you'll please share with us the email that uh, we can be able to share with those who attend our sessions to, to in case they have any queries regarding the same. Uh, because going through the emails and trying to respond to separate emails is taxing. And as we've said in many sessions, that we actually don't have team, uh, we say, employed to do the CPD. We, it's, uh, we just have one volunteer who tries to be able to summarize these registers and uh, make a list that can be mail merged and emailed to you. Therefore, we cannot be able to respond to the emails as easily. So what we are going to go going forward is through maybe a Google form, something that becomes very clear so that you even, yes, Gideon has given his uh, email to use uh, in case you have a problem with your token, but we'll do a very simple Google form so that you can uh, articulate the issue clearly. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not too sure the ones who've raised their hands. Maybe you might have to email because we need to end this session 
uh, with enough time to be able to move on to the next class. But I would want to request uh, the PPB that to allow Kenyatta because some people are taking a while to see the events and by the time they want to subscribe, the event is not events visible for up two weeks as we people get used to subscribing on time. And also to note that uh, for KNH, it is quite dynamic. Sometimes we don't know we are going to have an event until the day or a few hours of the event. And there's a, there's a two-step process to being able to create an event. We have to create what they call a program, which uh, if I am correct, a program is now there. We have to say a program to, to discuss communic communicable diseases. Then an event will be each specific activity. Like if today we discuss pneumonia, another day we discuss another disorder. But now creating that, it takes a while because we create a program and we need to wait for the PPB team, two of them to approve the program, and then we create the event. So in that case, you'll be starting to see some events appearing later, especially when we are not in control of uh, uh, how of the time that we get this. Uh, uh, so we'll ask the indulgence of the board that some of the programs, we may have to create them later. And uh, maybe in the last three minutes, if they can tell us for those programs that happened before we were able to uh, renew our status, should we be reloading them for those who have struggled to do self-reporting or can they proceed and do self, still do self-reporting for those much earlier events they attended before we put them in? So very quickly in the last two minutes, if Lily or Gideon can give us guidance, should we reload the events that had happened before we are able to create on the portal or should people just uh, struggle with the self-reporting? If I can uh, answer the question, but before I do so, let me request when you are sending out an uh, invitation, because I have seen maybe you are telling your people we are having this activity at this time. So in, in that activity also include, remember to subscribe on PPP portal so that when somebody reads that uh, invitation, he or she will remember that I'm supposed to subscribe. Uh, for that question, uh, since Murim um, has given out the email, you are supposed to maybe I hear out your issues. For those who are not able to do self-reporting, you can give us your, you, you, you will still continue to do self-reporting, but we have the, you, you give us the list of those people who are not able to do the self-reporting. Okay, thank you. I know we have just one minute to the end of the session i was hoping that we'll have had the link for the google form maybe when we do the subsequent invitation we'll add that that to remember to subscribe and also put the link for those who have issues but you have seen the email that is given there by gideon uh i'm sorry for those who may be having many but i think in summary those are the main concerns which are usually raised and now we at least we know the uh, which direction we can go to to address the concerns. So and, uh, we need to be able to end this meeting to allow the 7 p.m. session to start. So thank you all who joined us. And I hope for those who, uh, who joined us that there's something that has helped address an issue that you've had and we will uh, keep communicating on the same. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bert and Gideon for joining us today. I know it was, might have been short notice, but thank you so much for joining us today. And I am to believe you've looked at a number of the questions and you can include in the, in the PPB portal as area for frequently asked questions so that people can be able to go through that and address them. And for those who are also asking about uh, how do they create, get CPD provider status for their facilities, please reach out to Gideon and the PPB team. They've sent their, their emails so that you can be able to do, to do that. So thank you so much. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to close the meeting at this time because we need to start the, the 7 p.m. webinar on, uh, on a vaccine. So thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you can also join the 7 p.m. Yes, we need to end this meeting so that now we can move to the 7 p.m. meeting. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.